Hey there, fellow Beanstalkers. I'm Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. And on today's episode, it's our Fave 5 Foes for Fun. Here's some Fae Monsters on WebDM. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Monty Cook Games and their upcoming 5e book, Plane Breaker, a new supplement for planar adventuring. Real talk for a minute, folks. MCG gave us the inside scoop about this book a few weeks ago, and we got really excited. Why? Because Monty, Bruce Cordell, and Sean Reynolds are writing it. And in their incredible careers, they've done a few things, like develop 3rd edition D&D, and design some of our favorite Planescape modules ever. And now they're writing a new book with brand new planes, monsters, and player options as the Plane Breaker traverses the multiverse. Can you see why this is a big deal? Don't miss this one, folks. The Kickstarter begins in October. Follow it here. Link in the comments and description, too. All right, Jim. Here we are, still on our Fae kick. Uh, mm. And uh, today we're going to present some monsters, some Fae monsters that we get a kick out of, I guess. What do you what do you think about first off uh, when you think about Fey monsters and and uh, uh, you know like what what what, do you, what angle are you looking at as a DM? I'm I'm looking for a monster that has some kind of interaction that the the players might not have seen before. So and there's a concept in D and D of, of the trick monster, the monster mm -hmm. that that appears unbeatable or or to have a super power that that you know they can't defend against until you learn the trick of it. The, the classic right. example of this is the troll, right? Oh, it's going to keep coming back until we get it, you know? Uh, and then you know, you're supposed to burn it with fire or acid and, and then, and then it doesn't. It's sort of like the hope is that these monsters will have some kind of like imp you know, impact on the players of like, wow, that was really tough until we figured it out or, or whatever, you know? And so that's what I'm looking for in this. I'm, I'm looking for something that that's going to make for a memorable encounter, but not not once that's like i'm gonna have to rely on repetition or or the like to get the most out of the monster like i want this one to wow the party the first time uh i, I hit him with it because if i'm using fey then i want to vary things up keep it interesting and mixed as opposed to more mundane creatures where it's like yeah you're gonna be fighting a lot of goblins and like i'll vary them up with tactics and weapons and things like that but they're still goblins where mm -hmm. it's like this might be the only time you encounter a boggle so it's got to be like really memorable and really interesting and so that's why i, I really like these because all of these uh five fey have something very memorable about them and are like they're, they're going to leave an impression because they don't just stand there uh and fight or at least right, not right. all of them <laughs> well well you, you've already mentioned our, our first one we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh dig into here which is the boggle so what uh what do you yeah. like about this what do you like about this little bugger this gross little booger just yeah. <laughs> like like so it's a it's it's a it's kind of a trickster lurker type uh, uh monster a lot of control uh powers right off the bat without doing a whole stat dive uh or stat block dive into it just like looking at its offensive power it has a plus one to hit two damage like this is not a combat creature but its ability to lay down both slippery and sticky oil puddles, as well as secrete them uh, from you know, its own skin, and the fact that it can take any sort of frame or doorway and turn it into an extra dimensional like portal uh, that yeah. only it can reach through, is like opens up a world of prankster possibilities for this monster as it like is hiding around in dark corners out of sight of the party and using like, you know, a, a, a crack in the wall as a, a portal to pick their pockets, you know, mm -hmm. and then they try to come after it and it squeezes through a tight space and leaves behind a sticky residue that, that you know, like there's just a lot of ways for it to vex a low level party who don't have a lot of resources to handle that kind of, you know, monster that can just come and go and mess with them, you know. I love the idea of the slippery and sticky oil. Like, yeah, it says it secretes it, but no, we made the booger joke, but I mean, if it just had an insanely runny nose, just, just I mean, gross. It's, it's just, just gross. gross like, yeah, and that's what I, I don't know. I like gross monsters because when they're not really threatening, you know, physically yeah. to a party, if you can gross your party out, like, that becomes a different threat uh, all the same. 
and all the uh, same. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm actually reminded. Don't know if you ever watched the Voltron cartoon, but it's pretty awesome. Not all of it. No. And the, the character <laughs> Koran, at one point, he's he's old and he has a, a disease called the slipperies, where he just starts secreting oh, oil everywhere. Ugh. And when I read that, I'm just like, yeah, it's he's got you know these little boggles got the slipperies. So like just imagining you know a dungeon coated in in slippery oil from. A little yeah. a, a a baggle of boggles. I don't know what you call a, a group yeah, of boggles. But, you, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. Know. Know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> nuisance of boggles. Uh, <laughs> nuisance of boggles is great. You know, for so they, they right. They they uh, they pop up in in sort of like spots of extreme loneliness the like so that the the flavor text will say something like okay well they you know like widows or or people who are isolated might attract boggles but like to me they then prank on other people this is the kind of monster that like lames your horse or your dog and like drinks all the milk from the cow's udder like this is that mm -hmm. kind of monster it's like it's not harming anything it's the epitome of like attack the character sheet you yeah. know it's it's going after little things that that affect the quality of life of people around it and that's why this monster has to go and it's in service yeah. to like hags and fomorians and, and other kinds of like uh you know creatures dark eladrin mages things like that so it makes a good minion monster and just a good like nuisance monster yeah it drinks all your water skins while you're asleep um, yeah yeah totally stuff yeah like that. yep <laughs> Mm -hmm. ties your shoelaces together that sort of thing <laughs> oh that son of a oh that's you know, just annoying put scorpions in your boots while you're asleep just yeah you know. it just messes with you let's uh let's move along quickly here uh as it were yeah, to the let's do it. to the quickling which is yeah is one of those uh, i remember when i first read the driss novels and it got around to forgot the name of that little quickling that annoying oh, telephenophil yeah. or something. Anyway, I don't know. I just remember being that being so freaking annoying, and that if I was yeah. a if I was a player and having to deal with something like this, how much I would hate it. Um, yeah. So tell yeah. us why you like quicklings, yeah. there, Jeff. <laughs> I like it because they can vex players, because they'll yeah. just hate it. And like, <clears throat> this is what I mean when I say that. Like, I wouldn't use these monsters a lot, but when I use them, I, I want them to make the, you know the biggest impact. So. Like the quickling is has got a huge move speed, like four times the base of, of most uh, PCs would have. Uh, you know, disadvantage to to attack it if it's not incapacitated or restrained. It's got all these things that that for a low level party could find really difficult and for like new players who don't know that you're going to have to like use your reaction to set up an attack uh, or cast a spell at it or something like on paper, the offensive might of a quickling seems overwhelming you know like cr1 like this is too much it also has 10 hit points magic missile is probably gonna take this thing out and it doesn't need to roll to hit so like to me the quickling encounter is one where it's dashing all about there's lots of cover breaking line of sight but like the boggle there's a lot of opportunity for mischief and pranking and just playing tricks on the party and the fact that it can run so fast means it has a better chance of getting away from the party if they like <laughs> get that bloodlust and want to go after it certainly make like good bait of like oh, catch me if you can and then you mm -hmm. know lead them into uh you know the real nasties that uh that are lying in wait you know like the bugbears and things like that which in my world are fake creatures so that's why they're there <laughs> yeah well and the fact that they can make three attacks uh that are each doing a, a d4 plus six it's kind of nuts yeah it's not nothing uh, it's it's, it's kind of it, yeah. nuts yeah you could easily hurt somebody with this <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know especially if you, you especially if, a scout or or, or yeah. a straggler in the party <laughs> um yeah pick off the lone uh, the lone stragglers <laughs> but it'll also if you have the if you have those wizards or sorcerers that are like i'm not taking magic missile you can use this monster to remind them why magic missile exists. Like exactly, yeah. That's why it's that's why it's no no big deal. The ten hit points is a real killer for you know for this monster. And like multiples, having more than one, having lots of cover, places to break line of sight. Um, you know, making them you know use their daggers, but throwing them. You know, having just more than one. Uh, there's a yeah. lot of different ways to modify them to to get the most out of them, but like. There could also be very frustrating, and so you'd want to be careful uh, in how you use them, which is why I think going with the lore that says they're not murderers, like they they might fight, but they're not bloodthirsty. We'll get to those right. in a minute. 
they are there as a way to like vex the party to frustrate them not too much right not to the point where your players are about to walk out but just enough to really just build up a good steam of of we got to get these <laughs> got to get these little quickly <laughs> you know so pages. that you can uh you know rile the pcs up and maybe they'll make a rash decision uh, or ally themselves with someone they shouldn't in their uh haste to get revenge on these little buggers uh, yeah oh yeah P- pushing pushing the players into <laughs> into fun fun choices like that um that's why we're here uh, but if you're here for this, you can head on over to Patreon to have a little bit more of this. Uh, if you come, become a patron there, we have over 200 podcasts to uh, to fill your tabletop uh, quotient for the month. Uh, so uh, check that out if you if you'd like to. Now um, we, we we started with kind of the the, the fun little pranksters, uh, but now we're going to move yeah. into the meanies. Um, yeah. And so uh, let's yeah. start out with the These mean the guys because. It, it, it makes sense. Um, <laughs> yes. But what 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 stands out the most with the mean lock? Because, again, they 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 don't seem, you know, on the surface, uh, like they're they'd be too terrible to 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 fight. But uh, sure. maybe that's because yeah. it's the sunlight sensitivity. I don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah, these there definitely has a there's a time and a place to use these, and and you know when it's like dawn or dusk, you know, lots of dim light around, uh, is when you want it to uh, to use them. Like I look at the mean lock, and it's like this is a kind of a grab bag bruiser. The fact that it can paralyze with its claws is pretty nasty, but the DC for it's sort of low. Um, yeah. there's, there's a lot of things like that. There's the teleports and 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 the like. It's, so it's. I find that this monster is kind of difficult and, and probably would be one that I would reskin some in some way. But if you embrace the kind of idea that they are born out of uh, experiences of fear within the Fey Wild, and there's a lot of overlap between like the Fey and the Mean Lock and the Shadow Fell. I like blurring those lines in my campaigns, so yeah. you, know, you have to arrange that to taste. But for me, like the fact that they're a, a Fey creature that has these associations with shadow and fear means that they straddle these two worlds and so i'm really going to lean into that the the real like the real cool thing that i think uh, is is their ability to like psychically torment someone who's unconscious and by using their telepathy to like just induce such a degree of like fear and madness in them that that creature becomes a mean lock and I, I love a monster that can make more of itself. I absolutely do, because it could quickly get out of, get out of hand. And, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, you might not ever have a PC that's in the position to be psychically tormented, but that, that poor village, <laughs> you know, the, that, uh, that village full of CR one eighth commoners is sure in trouble uh, as, as these, you know, a pack of these things prey on them uh, and start to make more uh, of themselves. It could, it could really get, uh, like I said, really get out of hand. <laughs> well, also, uh, what I, what I, love, I mean, we already did our show on shadows. They, they can make more of yeah. themselves. So if you put some shadows yeah. and paired them up with some mean locks in some kind of weird natural pairing, shadow yeah. pact, yeah. like yeah. that can that can spiral out of hand pretty quickly. Um, Absolutely, lots lots of shadow themed monsters that would make a great addition to a mean locks layer. And like, if you look at their lore, their layers are these sort of locuses of, of their power that's where they would prefer to stay that's where they bring people back to to torment them and the like so it suggests a kind of society that they have even though they're clearly like magically generated uh creatures uh so the the fact that it blurs so many lines and like exists in all of these conceptual spaces is what i like about the mean lock that you can look at it and go wait is that a weird looking umber hulk that's made of plants or is it a <laughs> like why isn't it part of the shadow felt like I embrace the ambiguity and the messiness of it because it's this creature yeah. that's there to like stoke fear uh, and and uh, terrorize others. It's very gruesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Most definitely. Um, <laughs> speaking of another little little, little gruesome bastard, uh, this oh, is yeah. uh, this is this next one is one that is uh, there's quite a bit of folklore about. Uh, yeah, the red cap, <laughs> the, the red cap. giant yes. ass sickle. 
yeah, the sickle is a weird thing. I, you know, without getting into too much of a a, a minutia uh, filled tangent, uh, one of their features which allows them to you know to ignore the disadvantage of heavy weapons, and then they don't have a heavy weapon with which they could ignore the disadvantage of. It's just a oversized sickle, I guess. Anyway, I'm giving mine a pike. Like, just the biggest, longest weapon that you can find. Not only uh, is there a quote uh, in, in some sort of, like, folklore tradition mentioning the red uh, cap as wielding a pike staff, but it also helps to make up for their slow speed if they have a bigger reach. So <laughs> I like mm-hmm. the idea of a small little just... You know, this is born of a mushroom that cropped up at the side of, of, you know, where someone was murdered. Like this need to stalk and kill the person that committed that violence, but they themselves are, are you know, just unsubtle, confrontational, direct. Like, I, I really kind of like how they contrast with like the quickling or the mean lock, which is like hiding and, and you know, don't get too close. Don't reveal yourself. You know? Right, right. The red cap is much more like, no, I'm... I'm here, Come, you know, I'm, and I'm not going to stop. Like, you can't stop me. I'm not, can't be reasoned with, can't be bought off. Like, I have to dip my cap in your blood. Uh, otherwise, I cease to exist. And that's a very compelling monster. Like, it doesn't need an alignment if that's how it needs to survive, you know? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty blatant right there. Um, right. <laughs> But yeah, their 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 ability for their 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 big ability though is it's their iron bound pursuit that that mm. throws a lot of extra damage at you and knocks you prone uh, if they're if they yeah. move their full speed at you. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise it'd be too it'd be very easy to kite them. Uh, they're the you know the fact that they're never going to quite catch up with you uh, and attack you. Uh, that ability kind of keeps them in the game longer. Uh, and, of course, like, you know, you put them with other types of fae in, a, in an environment in which maybe they can get closer uh, without being seen. Um, then then you have a monster who doesn't, you know, have to worry so much about their uh, low speed. But uh, that iron boot, that's, mm, that's, that's some sweet stuff. I like that. And, and yeah. let's just say, like, aren't your fighters and everybody else wearing heavy armor? Don't they have iron boots, too? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It seems unfair to the red cap that they're so slowed down by it. But, you know, that's the brakes <laughs> of being a fairy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, especially like, it, it, yeah, that, that's the only part that's kind of like weird in that, uh, like, I get that it has disadvantage on, 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 on the dexterity stealth checks because oh, sure, of the sound. Yeah. But the, the slowness doesn't really make sense to me considering they have outsized strength. Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not wearing full plate. You know, it's just the yeah. boots. Yeah. I, the boots. I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a folklore re- reason for it. Uh, and the like, maybe they're just, they're not armor. They're just like, you know, cement shoes, but, <laughs> but iron <laughs> Big yeah, blocks yeah. of, of, uh, cooled iron that they were dipped down into or something. <laughs> yeah. It's more like uh it follows really like that, that, <laughs> yeah. that monster where it's not in any hurry, mm-hmm. but it's always coming. It's not at in you. any hurry. It's going to get you. It's gonna get you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. I would, yeah, yeah I would maybe, uh, I would maybe do a thing where I would bump some of their attacks for like an extra move action. Um, oh yeah, yeah, like a bonus move, just to give them a bit extra. Mm. Yeah, or just I don't know. Again, <laughs> that's their speed is the only thing that just kind of like my I kind of turned my head sideways like, huh? Oh uh, sure, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. But uh, but you know love all of the the folklore with that and and the the red cap in dresden like is is just awesome yeah. that whole uh, yeah. that storyline is great um, absolutely good yeah there's a lot there's a lot about it and, and to me it's like it's worth tracking down even if you just like read the wiki page on red caps like the non D D monster page for it it's worth to just sort of like read because you get a chance to like see where the inspiration for these monsters came from how they've been changed by D. And like, you can go back to the original source and be like, yeah, this is like, it fits with the monster. It's thematic, it's fantastic. It's, it's literally a fairy tale. So it fits with the game, but it's fresh and it's new and not necessarily something that your, that your players might expect, uh, especially if you've used the monster before. Mm-hmm. Most stuff. All right. And uh, our last monster here is a namesake of my very first D&D characters, uh, figurine of wondrous power, but- uh, Indeed. The Corrid. Um, <laughs> And and this one, you know, this is a this is an interesting uh, fake creature, uh, and also yeah. uh, for all you Mortal Combat fans out there, uh, you know, 
that love Sindel. Um, <laughs> you like you like creatures that command their hair to do things, which is uh-huh. my what uh, yeah. I think is the the most interesting part of this beast. <laughs> it really is, yeah, yeah. The 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 amalgamation of like what's clearly comes from folklore of this like. I, I have magic hair, whatever, whatever you cut it with, it, it becomes a rope of that substance and I can like ha- animate it and, and control it. Like that's just to me, classic fairy tale. Like, like you just scratch your head. Like what, really? Like, all right, as a whole, that's cool. But, but animated hair ropes. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then meeting with this like D and D conception of the elements, because if you, if you read some of the, the fairy tale background of Corid, like you might mention that it's an earth spirit, which, doesn't necessarily mean what D and D has it mean. Right. Yeah. And so D and D takes it and goes like, well, now they can also like summon earth elementals and move into the earth and burrow and this, that, and the other it's stone camouflage. And so like what I like about that is that it, it highlights more of that ambiguity towards these monsters where if like a mean lock is like, okay, is it an aberration? Is it a fay? Where does it live? That kind of thing feel the same with a core is it like is it an elemental could it be an elemental like i my answer to that is yes uh, it's both an elemental and a fey uh, it's and a fey so yeah. Yeah. right that that blurring of the lines is what's interesting about it um the fact that it's like can just destroy you with boulders and has as many animated hair ropes as you as dm deem appropriate to uh you know to the encounter uh that really makes it an interesting monster to use because I guarantee your players will remember that that time that they fought a monster that had animated hair. And as long as it was touching the ground was just wrecking shop with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's a real tank. Just, yeah. It can easily just meld into stone, you know, at yeah. will and just disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's some solid stuff. Uh, cause yeah, those, those extra, those extra uh, damage on uh, just because it's touching the earth is just man. You just, just you want really to figure out stuff. some way yeah. to just throw this fucker <laughs> in the air, <laughs> like, just cast levitate yeah. every yeah. every round until mm-hmm. it works. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally putting these things in the underdark. That's that's where they are. I, I know the it lists their sort of environment as forest, but to me they're like classic underdark mountainous monster. You know, maybe mm-hmm. you meet one with, a, with some gargoyles or galabder or something like that that it's, uh, you know, frolicking with or, or having some debate about, you know. But that's the yeah. other thing with a lot of these creatures. If you don't want to use them in combat, you can take what they represent, whether it's a you know, connection to an element or an emotion or something like that, and then make that the focus of, of your MacGuffin quest, you know, to mm-hmm. call back to the quickling. You know, they only live like... 15 or so years so maybe there's one you meet that's like 18 years old like ancient and Oof. it knows the true understanding of the speed force and you have to like you know talk to it befriend it before it it dies or something like that yeah like with a corid it could be you know how do i convince that earth elemental t- to like me i want to be friends with it you know or, or something like that bro. you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know uh you know whatever it is that 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 fey represents because they're inherently magical you can do a lot with the ideas that they represent and so they, this doesn't always have to be like a a combat encounter uh it could be something else it could be like information that the party needs or or mm-hmm. some sort of service you know uh that that could easily be uh, uh like a non-combat uh, encounter framework for uh, for these creatures Oh yeah, definitely. I, I I can see like a group of chords being being like uh, cattle rustlers or something like that with their living ropes, <laughs> just lassoing cattle and bringing them underground, stealing mm. uh, a rancher's <laughs> thing or whatever. Uh, then yes, you have a dancing yeah. cow scene. Um, if you want <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So so the presence of these hair ropes begs the question of like when you if you know if you kill a cord and there's a bunch of its hair ropes left over, like. What does that mean for the party? Because there's some really cool magic ropes in Deity, right? There's rope of entangling, rope of climbing. Um, I can see both of those being like a good model f- for it. But to me, the thing is, is like, all right, the cord had to cut it off their hair or you know, cut off their head and has this connection to it. That's why it's animated. For you to do it, you've got to transplant that hair on your head. So like, that's what, that's my stipulation. Part of attunement is that you have to put this iron gold whatever 
type of material the hair rope's made out of and let it grow on your head. And that's how I'm, that's the attunement requirement. <laughs> So I do. So you got like a little, got a little like a little Padawan uh, hair tie thing. Yeah, it's like fifty foot long. Side. Yeah, <laughs> fifty foot tall rat tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's some people out there that would love that. Uh, yeah, I'd do it. I would certainly. Oh, sure, sweet. <laughs> oh man, it'd be real fun. All right. Well, this was a this was a fun exploration of uh, of uh, some fake creatures. Uh, hope this inspired oh, yeah. you. Uh, please, uh, you know, help us out with the uh, YouTube al- algorithm there. Like, uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications and all that, all the fun stuff. And uh, we hope this uh, enriches your games uh, in the future.